Hello, my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another Quick Bite, Living the Word. So uh, just on a more vain note this morning, uh, to start off this morning. So I love doing these videos. I enjoy this time with you guys. I know that I don't necessarily get to respond to you, but I enjoy hearing from you and how the Lord has used these things to bless you and help you out and stuff like this. Um, but it is in that note that I have to say I, I, I love doing these videos, but there's one drawback to these videos. And that is the fact that every day I get to see how much shinier my head becomes as I lose more and more hair. Just a side note. Anyway, I love you guys. I hope you're having a blessed day. Uh, uh, the thought I have for us today, the quick bite I have for us today, comes from a story we're familiar with, but it comes from Acts chapter 4. And this has really been heavy upon my heart because I just know during this time, many people are struggling with a lot of things. And, and there's something I really want us to recognize in this story in Acts chapter 4. And this is where Peter and John are called before uh, Ananias, the high priest, and and, and uh, to give testimony about the lame man that had been healed outside the temple. You remember that as they were walking in, the man was sitting there begging. And uh, basically, you know, well, not basically, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but that which I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And so he gets up and the lame man's healed. And now they're examining him about how this man was healed. They all knew who this man was. They saw him on a regular basis. And now he here he's stands before them a whole. And this is the examination thereof. And ultimately, this is Peter's response. And that's what I want to look at together real briefly this morning uh, by way of encouragement to us, but also a way of instruction for us. Because I think right now there's a lot of people who are getting very confused about salvation and what salvation it is and how we are saved. And we, I want you to make something very clear. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Now, that doesn't mean we have these perfect lives and that every area of our life is under control and everything like this. Uh, what I want you to understand about that is this, is that salvation is of the Lord. That's the period. That's the end of the story. It's only of the Lord. It's not of ourselves. It's nothing we can do. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. That is certain. And there's nothing we can do. Salvation is only of God. And it only comes by faith in Jesus Christ, by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your salvation through his completed work of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection, right? Now, there may be times in our life when we unfortunately have a season when we may walk away for a while from the Lord or, or we stumble in the flesh or whatever the case may be. And so... I want to make something clear. You're not lost at that point. If you've trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and only you know whether or not you've done that, you are saved. And I want to make that point very clear because oftentimes the world wants to judge us based off of the failings of our flesh as to whether or not we're saved. Even the church sometimes will do such a thing. And let me give you an example of how I know this to be a truth. Scripture says, the psalmist said, restore, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Now, this is when he was going through a season when he was having a hard time in his flesh. So what is he saying about restore unto me the joy of my salvation? See, the salvation was secure. It was based upon God and God alone. It wasn't based upon him or himself or what he was going to do or his behaviors or his actions. But he'd lost the joy of that salvation. The salvation still existed, but the joy thereof was missing. Why? Because he was walking away from the Lord. He wasn't walking and treading where he needed to be walking and treading. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting all fired up and diatribing on that. I want to go back to our text now in Acts chapter 4. Here's Peter's response to them when they're questioning about the man and his healing. And I want to pick it up at verse 8, if you would, with me. All right. It says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he was made he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which is set at naught of the you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now, I love this. Here's the point. There is no other salvation. There's only salvation in Jesus Christ and what he has done. Now, what I love about this is this. I want you to notice how he starts off. He says there in verse 10, be known, on, and first of all, first of all, recognize he's filled with the Holy Ghost when he's saying this. That means God is speaking right now and this is what God is saying. Be it known unto you all 
that what? That by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only name, the only way, right? Whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. Here's what I love about this. Do you think this impotent man was perfect right now? Do you think he did everything holy and righteous right now? Do you think he fully understood the gravity of what he had received right now? But what he does know is he stands before them all whole, complete, everything he needed at that moment in Jesus. See, when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's the point. We become whole again, complete. Our salvation is complete in him. It's not complete in our actions and what we do or how we behave. Those are simply just what? Those are just us working out our salvation. In other words, trying to be pleasing to our Lord. But that doesn't change our status of our salvation. We don't lose our salvation. We don't gain our salvation based off our works. We have salvation in Jesus Christ and him alone. Which is why he would say, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the only salvation. It's the only way to be saved. Which is why Jesus would say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me. A lot of people go, well, that's that that you know, we have to walk that narrow street. We have to walk that narrow way. Uh, you can't get any more narrow than that. One way to Jesus. But then I want to close with this thought for you. Because this is important. Verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Would the world know that you've been with Jesus because they know that you're ignorant and unlearned, but yet you have knowledge that is divine and beyond all recognition? That you have, uh, that they can recognize you've been with Jesus or do they recognize that this Jesus that you serve is somebody who leaves you in a place of anxiety, worry, frustration? Because if you're living in Jesus, you're walking in Jesus, and you recognize your salvation is secured by Jesus, here's the beauty of it all. We should walk boldly, knowing what? That our salvation is fully secured in Christ and Christ alone. Well, I hope this encourages you. I hope this challenges you. And just remember, that's what makes us whole, is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Not ourselves, not our church, not our family, Jesus Christ alone. I love you, we love you, God loves you, and God's got this.